Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is going on, everybody? Sorry for the delay in getting back to the regular schedule of the How Awesome Is This podcast. If you were subscribed over at GasDigital.com, you would have already heard this because it's been up under our bonus content page. But that's okay. Go subscribe. Use the code JOSTA30. You'll get a 30-day free trial, and you will hear uh, new episodes of this podcast and the JOSTA show. Like We we watched the movie Moonfall. We watched another uh, Hulk Hogan movie, uh, Suburban Commando. That's up under bonus content, and then you'll see there's episodes with uh, Brendan Small. We got a new Josta Show episode going up with Dave from Throwdown, who's going to be playing uh, the Furnace Fest. Hey, pretty and Throwdown, first time on stage in like over a decade together. So go get your Furnace Fest tickets. By the time you're watching this on YouTube or, or, or listen to this on iTunes or Spotify, I will be out on the road with Hey, Breed, Terror, Vane FM, and Jesus Peace on select shows. Plus, Internal Bleeding's playing Philly, In Human Conditions, playing the two Florida shows. All the VIPs are almost sold out, but you can go check martyrstore.net and use the code uh, SUMMER. And that code is going to expire this weekend, so use it soon. Got to thank Factor Meals. Go to factormeals.com slash JOSTA50 and use the code JOSTA50 to get 50% off some awesome meals. And also want to thank IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10 at IndieMerchStore.com when you're going and you're shopping for that new Cannibal Corpse, that new Thy Art is Murder, that new Carnifex, or any of the restocks. Use the code JOSTA10 at IndieMerchStore.com. All right. We watched this. Uh, yeah. You'll see. Now on to the show. <laughs> How awesome! How awesome! How awesome is this podcast? Here goes it. We're <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. It's another episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast. We watched the Steven Seagal Contagion Containment Thriller. Can you even can you even call this an action movie? I feel like there was no action. Huh. There was there wasn't a bullet shot a punch thrown for the first fucking 45 minutes. Are we gonna even do we even bother watching the trailer? No. <laughs> no, we, we watched the trailer at the Roll end of the last the trail. one. <laughs> okay, good. Because <laughs> fuck that trailer. The trailer was yeah. false advertising. I thought he was going to at least punch someone within the first seven minutes. This has to be the longest <laughs> intro to a Seagal film without a one fucking compound fracture. I <laughs> There, no, there was no compound fracture, and there was no strip club to be found. What's going on? He's an old man. He's he's uh, changing his ways. Yeah, Dude. please. This movie was from a while ago. He oh, ain't yes. changed. Twenty five years old. <laughs> Do you guys ever see a Rotten Tomatoes score that you're like, "That's wrong. This movie fucking rules." Yes. This uh, is not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes had to have gotten this right. What is this, like 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, 20% at the most? I think it's 20. Yeah, it's got to be low. Yeah. So Rotten Tomatoes was right all the way. Let's start from the beginning. Cowboy Steven Seagal. No Sam, uh, what's that? What's the what's the cowboy uh Sam what's his face? They use him in everything. Sam Elliott. Sam oh, yeah. Elliott. They got the budget Sam Elliott in here. <laughs> well, this they got the direct to video Sam Elliott, because this this movie is the his first direct to video movie. I know Steven Seagal's low hanging <laughs> fruit at this point, and everybody's piled on and will yep. continue to keep piling on. Do you think that there's like a 14 year old or a 15 year old kid out there who's going to stumble upon a recent Steven Seagal movie and become a fan. No, no. not unless he's like some like I love irony film student. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like a clever, like a clever film school kid. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, is, are, are these, uh, are these movies going to be, you know, somebody's Tommy Wiseau, you know, it, 
<laughs> is that going to happen? Yeah. But thing is, he did this on purpose. So yeah, oh, yeah. <clears throat> we're allowed to let him have it for this. He did this on purpose. I mean, listen, he he clear. I will give him a lot of credit because it's obvious that he studied for months working on that accent. I mean, it was just <laughs> spot on. I mean. We should do the whole, every one of us should do the whole podcast in that accent from here on out. Well, all we had to do what, was just what say do you one, mean? we could just say one sentence in it and then stop just like he did. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that, Charlie? What do you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, his, his weird like whisper dad joke talk throughout this. I, yeah. it was so angering. I was angry. <laughs> It's so I, disjointed. I, I loved in the I loved in the beginning, like they just clearly can only afford like stock music. So he's like roaming through the plains with how Sam dare Elliott. you? And how dare you? It's like shitty city Steve, slickers music, and you're like, what? The it's fuck? pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Edwards, and they're like going to get a sick cow, and you're like, why is the music so happy? <laughs> <Yeah>. Seriously, <laughs> I was like, like complete juxtaposition, man. I'm like, why? Why is this already happening? <laughs> Stephen, how dare you take the name of Stephen Edwards? in vain actually he credited himself as steve edwards on this i was thinking oh maybe he didn't want his like maybe he was not maybe he disavowed this movie because he phoned it in with the music but i did get like that fugitive that like wannabe fugitive lick in the middle which they repeated a couple times because that's yeah. like one of the best parts of fugitive and it, it's like a throwback to you know him having an actual goal in the movie which this movie what was the fucking goal um revenge uh, yeah it I, was like it became a revenge movie and you're like all you if you really wanted to make this a Seagal movie you have those weird disease people the militia take the daughter first and then he finds out about this virus and then he goes, and then they're like, hey, they have a, a hostage. It's your daughter. And then he has to go in and do <laughs> both things because then he could fight people. Apparently, the uh, original cut had a lot more action, and then they just took it all out. Wait, there's, an, there's a director's cut of Steven Seagal's The Patriot? No, it just sounds like the first pass because I was, like, looking okay. up notes, and they said, they said it ended up being used in um, – in a martial arts documentary that was being released at the time, they used some of the work from it. So I'm assuming that he might have been making a martial arts <laughs> movie. Yeah, only, why wouldn't he double dip like that? He only killed 40 people in this movie, so it's like art house, you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thing is, uh, there's, he, doesn't, there be he doesn't have any training that you know of, but extreme marksman oh yeah I like it, it, it angered me because you're like all you, like there's so many like i get like the 80s trope like when like like arnold and stallone were just like immediate badasses and we don't we're not shown anything we're j we just like accept it <clears throat> but there were also movies where like they were like fragile people and it's like Steven Seagal imagines himself to be an Arnold where Steven Seagal should have been playing it like a Bruce Willis where it's like he's kind of scared and doesn't know what's happening. But luckily, luckily, I had that. Key. All he has to do is just mention, oh, you know, you know, when I trained all this virology, I studied, you know, martial arts and then you're off to the races. You need one line. And he just. He was like, he threw a guy. He threw a guy through the drywall. <laughs> wait, wait, back it up, back it up. I already know where you're going. <laughs> he, he, we'll we'll get there, but we didn't talk about him being a veterinarian, home slash homeopathic. <laughs> Doctor bro. who gives a guy a kidney ultrasound, lives bro, the guy up. Wait, 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 wait. He's not only is he just like this homeo doctor guy who's 
also a vet who's giving <laughs> who's giving a who's giving an ultrasound to a kidney that's clearly already on the screen. He's on top of this, an immunologist. <laughs> like, I liked. I, I I really like the concept that we're supposed to believe that a man who like he has bankers hours at the doctor's office because yes. his daughter gets out of school and she walks to and he's like, oh, I'm all done for the day and he's all done. But <laughs> he like, I'm pretty sure the pie that he brought home was payment for another one of the things. And you're like, yes. okay, so you. But what, like, why isn't there just like two sentences of like, well, you know, I used to work for the government and I do, but now I just get paid in pies but, because I don't yeah. want to do it. Oh, then yeah. immediately that judge gets sick and they're like, you better get down here. And it's like, how do we know that he knows anything? Dude, <laughs> hey, right. hey, pie guy, he's using the barter here. system. It's like once they went into the libertarian barter system for Steven Seagal, I'm like, wait a second. He has more in common with the militia than he thinks. Then he sets it up by saying that in a little ex, like in a little exposition piece when they're going up to the road, but the road is closed. Like when they literally arrest the militia guy and put him on trial five minutes later. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I wrote down in my notes, Judge Dredd takes longer than that. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> like he, they just, they drove, they just literally picked him up and drove him to an already full courthouse. <laughs> what about what about when he mentions the mom? What about when he mentions the mom early on with the dad jokes? Oh, oh, yeah. oh dude, he he has nothing good to ever say about a woman. Period. Ever. Let's, let's just let's just be clear about that. But and, hold on, let's go back, back. Let's go back to him saving this horse. Yes. The yep. little tiny horse. Number one, where is this property that you can have a little horse roam there and something's not going to eat it? <laughs> Number Montana. two, it's like that dude was just like, you know, uh, discount Sam Elliott. Yo, we're putting this thing down. He doesn't get crazy about it. He's like, no, put your gun away. Let's make a bet that I can save it. What, wait, wait, wait a minute. What is going on? What about what about when the daughter asks him about it and he gets all stoic and he's like, well, so and so says, you know, the horse has got to go out to pasture on their own. So and I'm like, wait, what? I rewound yeah. that part like three times. I was like, wait. Oh, yeah, that that whole interaction baffling. And what? it's so uncomfortable. I'm like, wait a minute. In real life, doesn't he have like three or four kids? How does he not know how to talk to a kid? He well, I'll tell well I, because I bet you that's how he talks to his kid. He oh, has well, never I'm had sure. a, a genuine human interaction in his <laughs> life. There's, Literally it, wrote that down. I'm like, all of his interactions are crazy. It if this, if there was a drinking game where you had to take a shot. When he changed his facial expression, you would be stone sober. Sober all day. <laughs> all day. You, that, that you, I even I wrote something. Hold on. I even <laughs> have a note about it. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Which he they do that so that when the time comes, you won't see which way the souls are running. It was almost good. It was like 85% mm -hmm. there. Like I felt like any line that he ad libbed on his own. <laughs> It kind of like tapered off with the delivery. And I'm like, wait, was he, did he just ad lib this? And how does this relate to anything in the fucking story? Doesn't. Uh, I love, if, um, to try to keep it on track, when we, go, when they, they go to the courthouse and like, I don't know what time they go to the courthouse. He's dropping a lot of guys. He, he's, he's, he's dropping her off. He's dropping her off for school. when she goes to, when they go to court. Okay. That guy Floyd. Spits, spits on the judge. And then the judge is immediate is sick within three hours. No, no, no. Wait, wait, you're already going too far. He, <laughs> he, he heard, they must've called him and said, Hey, we got Floyd. And he was like, wait, let me go to my VHS tape collection. If you're bringing Floyd in, I have the perfect tape to play during the pretrial process four minutes after you've arrested him. 
and it will be a tape that tells me I should convict him right out of the gate. <laughs> None of that made sense. It's like, <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. I just, I just couldn't understand because obviously they didn't just pick him up and drive there. There was some, there was some other part of the courthouse thing that we didn't see because time doesn't work like that. But <laughs> Those police, if that virus works that fast, the three <laughs> police that brought him in would be sick by the time yeah. they were in the trial. Because that, that judge goes down, like, if, if the trial started at noon, the goddamn judge goes down by two because the kid's out of school and they got to go right there. Yo, Seagal was there sucking up virus juice from Day one. Uh, in, never got to, his just ridiculous looking at dudes with there. masks on. Just the, <clears throat> what? Oh, and by the way, I don't close. know who I don't know who actually wrote this. Like I know like David Ayer apparently wrote the script and somebody else apparently did. And um but they took their names off of it because Steven Seagal happened. got a hold of it and then decided but, to turn it into this. Like Steven Seagal calls that virology guy. That entire scene made no sense the first call, but when he calls back, he's like, "Listen, I need you and you guys here with the spacesuits ASAP." And you're like, "Just call no, no, them." He, he took the clue. He took call the clue. them contamination suits because then, but then later on in the movie, another guy says, "Oh, they're all they're all over at the hospital in the spacesuits." And you're like, Did "Look, you it, guys, not even research what they're actually called because it is, <laughs> it's common knowledge that immunologists." Call those spacesuits. <laughs> Common knowledge, dude. No. This movie, this fucking movie. Space like, we, suits. we have yes. to do. We have to do better. Like we cannot. We cannot do another Steven Seagal movie ever. Again. <laughs> You're like having like life revelations. No, <laughs> we, we I have really to do better. I was waiting for like as a people, we have to do better. People <laughs> were so mad that we announced this movie. Oh yeah, this was madness. People, people had to write private messages on the Patreon saying, "Please don't do this." Please. <laughs> like, please Dude, actually I, watch an awesome movie. Yeah, but that's like, how list. awesome is this? Yeah. I mean, well, we, it's not. Yeah, that's what we we check it out, and this one was not that awesome. <laughs> it's what happens. We did. We were duped by the trailer. Whoever, who, who else has ever watched this movie? It's a direct video. Nobody. I feel. Yeah. I feel like there's a there's a there's a time where between Seagal and this, like this was the turning point. This was the one where he just committed to utter and complete garbage. And it gets yeah, funny it's when he it's his, like it's his first direct video like, he, like 60, over. 65 pounds later, it starts to actually get funny for him. Like when he's doing like <laughs> right. the fighting scenes yeah. in the air, like <laughs> we should have watched that one where he's actually fighting people in a chair. Like he's so. You know, lazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, then that means we're watching another one. But hey, there was, <laughs> no, but there was definitely good stuff in here to pick out. Like he said. We'll get that kidney up and running. Who oh says that? Like Who it's a fucking that? motorbike. <laughs> and he, and he, here's here's some roots because, as everybody knows, all of these things can actually be like it's. That's not exactly true, sir. And like you, know, <laughs> you, you talked to one person and you pretended that they were a sage and they were a genius, and now we're like because. I'm sure that's what he espouses in real life. Like, yes, like, he pretends to be a Native American chief who knows magic secrets a, of the earth. He's a Native American Japanese man that's actually yeah. born of Dutch and Russian parents. Oh, he, he says he he says he's part Cherokee, but really he's no. just as heavy as a fucking Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> wow. he, like his ass and hips. We, we don't even, let's just you know what we should do from now on with Steven Seagal. We should just watch his trailers, and that's it. Like, if that could be a whole show, like, let's watch the trailer for Out for a Kill. I think that's the one where he 
<coughs> literally fights in an office chair. Out and I don't even for a kill. <laughs> yeah, not out to it's kill. Not, not in, out for or not, blood. Not no. out for a run. It's out for no. a kill. <laughs> I'm gonna go, out, honey. I'm gonna go out for a kill. Do you need Wait. any milk? Is anybody going to go up to a red box or go to like um, uh, Tubi and make the same mistake? Like we should warn people. We should be a voice for the voiceless and say, don't do it. Stop at marked for death. Stop at. Um, How many movies have he done? Oh, too many. <clears throat> oh, but how many movies I, has he should have not oh done? Oh God! Here we go. Out here we go. Out for oh, this is just We're wonderful. The trailer. <laughs> oh God! I mean, once once you're in like comedians' bits, and you've got fifty thousand YouTube videos about what a shit bag you are. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's the best CGI I've seen in one of his movies. <clears throat> I think you got the wrong answer. Turn it up. Also, how how have none of his movies? He's never fought an alien. Nothing. He just punches guys in the face. He won't. He's like, what is do, happening? I don't do fantasy. <laughs> He's, I don't do I don't do comedy on purpose. It would be hilarious if Steven Seagal, like, put his foot down and said, "I just don't do fantasy." <laughs> like they they wanted him to be in Lord of the Rings, and he was like, "Nope, I just don't do it." What? Sorry. Guys. What? What just did we just see? His Nothing. iron fist smashing another hand to bits. Dear God, I think these this movie is a cry for help. There. Someone's on the wall. Oh. What the fuck is happening? Was there an outline of a woman in that explosion? Because that was weird. I, I think there was. And there wasn't what? any good one liners in this movie. There wasn't any good. He doesn't have good one fight scenes. All none of that looked cohesive in any sort of way. It just looked like move. It looked like clips from all of his movies in that movie. Yeah. How, <clears throat> how um, his career cir goes. Circling back to this movie, I love when not Sam Elliott shows up in the hospital and he goes, "He's like, boss, what's going on? This whole damn town's sick." And he's just like. I don't know. We're trying to figure it out. Why not? And he basically says, "Why don't you hang out with all these sick people? Even though I know you get, it'll yeah. probably kill you." And uh, let, let, let's see what's going on. <laughs> he doesn't say like, "Come in here because things are bad. Don't go near those people." No, no, just hang out out there for a while. What was what was the what was the reason why the militia people were going to take the antitoxin were they going to then hold the antitoxin for ransom were I they going to so they needed to get like they did they needed to get sick on their own to get people sick instead of just giving it to somebody else to get them sick and then say hey we have the antitoxin yeah i to me it felt like uh that feels a little stupid because <laughs> I mean, the virus, the virus takes about 25 <laughs> seconds to like almost almost be in full outbreak. My eyes are melting like mode. So I don't know, maybe wait, maybe wait a bit. But they were like, oh, yeah, we all took the anti, we all took the, you know, the anti serum. And it's like, what, what did you purposely like infect yourself to take the anti serum to make sure it worked? Like, just fucking stay away, you weirdo. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm going to take the virus, go and fucking turn myself in. And then the guy's going to pretend to be a lawyer, come to the jail and give me the antitoxin. That seems common. You, you sent the judge the tape. You could have just sent him the virus. You didn't even need the trial. You didn't even nope. need to spit on him. Nope. No logic. Well, you definitely didn't need to spit on him because 
everybody was sick. Like, it's not like there was like a rash of town spittings happening where everybody got <laughs> sick that way. Everybody just got sick normally. He didn't even need to spit on him. <laughs> a rash I, of town spittings. Like, I when everybody about, walked in, you're like, why did he have to spit on him then? What a waste of time. I was that about to was ready for death. Like, and I look, and I, I'm convinced that Seagal was like, I'm not gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna wear one of those suits because I look stupid. Like he just didn't want to wear one of the one of the quote unquote space suits. Like, oh, he, he didn't want to mess up his hair. You couldn't see yeah. his face if he was wearing a space suit. Yep. Let, let's go to the chat real quick, and I I would just want to apologize to everybody for watching this movie and doing this podcast. I was 38 minutes in, and I was gonna cancel this fucking podcast. <laughs> Go outside and punch a tree <laughs> for like fucking then, ten minutes. Straight. But then you realize that you weren't Seagal, so the tree wouldn't just explode. So you yeah. Gave up. <laughs> that, that I, I realized I wasn't was Seagal, so and the tree wasn't a woman that I was married to. <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> unbelievable! Paul, but, by the way, Paul, <laughs> how great was it that he they kill that guy Frank, not Sam Elliott? He gets killed, and he's in dire. He's trying to rush to get to Grandpa's house, and but clearly he had time to make a death wreath. <laughs> like, how long did that take? There was a lot of work. It was very ornate. That took at yeah. least two hours to make that wreath. It's like there, it's Seagal. So there is no logic other than he can do superhuman things. So on top of the fact that he's going to like figure out how to save everybody his daughter's blood which by virtue is his is going to save everybody or it just it, how awesome can you be in every <laughs> movie how it's like how awesome is this man that's well, what that's this podcast now is when, how awesome he, is this man when he threw the guy <laughs> through the drywall i had to pause it because i was i was laughing so hard i like it like i went i saw black i was about to pass out because that it's, drywall looks to be as thick as wrapping paper like it <laughs> was <laughs> amazing and you didn't really sh it, it it just didn't make sense at all he didn't really <laughs> <laughs> Why why did that happen and why is it edited poorly? <laughs> that, was, that was my favorite part, except for except I wrote it down when all like the rest of the movie he like lost the accent and then when they were when they were at the fire after that Frank guy died, he just randomly goes, All right, we gotta go. Trying to get up on this bug. And I just wrote and I wrote that clip trying to get up on yeah, this bug, and I wrote Fuck you. <laughs> That's amazing. And by the way, it's like 47 minutes in, like pretty much 47 even. That's where he throws him through that, throws him through the wall. Yeah. Makes no sense to me. I I watched it five times. He showed no physicality stop before, sit before that. And all of a sudden, he's just stone cold murderer. <laughs> he can Dude. do whatever he wants. Dude, and I mean the accuracy of his gunshots too. It's just like, yo, yeah, like, you can't shoot that well with no explanation. Yeah, he's suddenly John Wick. Just oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so you can also shoot well on top of being a vet immunologist, uh, <laughs> yeah, doctor, doctor, detective. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, your blood heals. Your Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> where, it's called being a Mary was Sue. The wife? Did the wife ever. Immaculate oh, no. conception. <laughs> oh, no, she she just sucks yeah, she, and doesn't exist. Died? That's all. I don't I don't think she died. I think she just was a terrible person. No, she doesn't exist. They, there was no explanation. Just he said something negative about the mom, and that's all we that's, that's all we know. Because that's real funny to always. <laughs> like, he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make fun of women. I forgot. I'm never watching this movie, <laughs> but, <so. laughs> but always has a daughter. 
always has always, a, always saving a daughter, always saving a girl. It, he's just the worst. Awful. Just yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. Dude, we we should have canceled this podcast. We should have fucking <laughs> No, come on. They at the end, they just they realize that the tea can save everybody. The and flowers. They just, they just drop flowers from a helicopter, and then you just hear a bullhorn going, collect some of these flowers. Dude, you don't no. say how much. Collect these flowers and boil them, and then we'll be by to finish the job. What the fuck? Like, that you can't fucking so do that. I started, you can't I pounded, hat. I almost broke the arm rest on my couch. I just started pounding the armchair going, no, no. <laughs> just but, knowing I'll never get this time back. Yeah, that, I was so mad about that. That does, yep. that does, that does <laughs> remind me, though, I'm going to watch uh, Star Trek Picard later, so I've got to I've got to boil some Earl Grey tea so I can shoot it into my body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but is it an antiviral <laughs> Earl Grey tea? <laughs> antiviral yeah, tea. He's, he raining want, from the sky. And also, wouldn't you just be able to drink it? You don't you, they're gonna inject it into you. It's just tea. It doesn't of, work like that. Yeah. Out of all the things it's that could like it's, it's like in, just, just like putting water into your veins. What the he's fuck? Like, we he gotta make, he's hard. like, we gotta make the cows eat the flowers, and then we gotta and then we gotta then we gotta eat the cows because they eat the flowers <laughs> and we'll make burgers that heal everybody. <laughs> you know, get up on this bug. Paul Scally in the unreal. chat says they, they cleared out of every flower, then lobbed them out of a helicopter like Mardi Gras beans. Who was collecting them in a hat from the middle I, of the street? I want to see the small riot that that caused when some people were like, well, I want the cure. Get away. Those are mine. No, those are mine. And like they're just pushing each other. Over the flowers, you don't like, think, yeah. It's like you well, don't you think can't somebody just would boil have... one, you probably have to boil a large pile. So, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push that old lady over and get my own. I would be immediately okay. grifting old ladies for flower water. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would immediately be grifting old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Quick interruption, letting you know today's episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast is brought to you by Factor Meals, a great company that will deliver food to your door that you can then just heat and eat or you can take with you to work um i take them with me on the bus on tour they're incredible i've tried the keto options i tried the veggie options the vegan options my daughter really liked the vegan options and she's a stickler for like these these uh you know meal kit companies when they come uh factor was always delivered so go to factormeals.com slash josta50 use the promo code josta50 and you're going to save 50 percent off uh for a limited time big thank you to factor meals for support in today's episode. Also, thank you to IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10 when you're shopping for the new Cannibal Corpse or the new Thy Art is Murder or perhaps the new Carnifex or any of the awesome uh, vinyl, merch, and accessories that they have over at IndieMerchStore.com. Promo code JOSTA10. Now back to the show. They dropped fucking flowers out of the fucking chopper like uh, like fucking kiss during Shout It Out Loud with the confetti. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this, this. I just love the concept of like FEMA, like FEMA not sending you medicine, just like dropping all the ingredients out of a plane. Just being like, Make it yourself. Just, just bring it home, bring it home, bring it home, and we'll be there later. Like, just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> there, this Wait, wasn't you all have fun. centrifuges, don't you? Just use your centrifuge. <laughs> Boil it in your centrifuge. <laughs> <laughs> also, because because Steven Seagal really has a disdain for science and scientists and just nerds in general or anybody he views as like a not tough guy, he had to even include like digs at doctors and yeah. scientists, like yeah. not knowing what he was doing. Why can't they be superhero Native Americans like me? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's, it's so petty. It's so petty. <laughs> really oh, holy crap, man. <laughs> at least these other ones that we watch, like the one with DMX, at least they were kind of fun and they were movie-ish. Mm -hmm. Like, this wasn't even movie-ish. This was like bad 
te- like lifetime fucking I don't even know Hallmark. No, Hallmark Channel doesn't get into this shit. But it was, I think um, once he got it was like a bad sci-fi movie when they were like, "Oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna put monsters in this one. Let's try to make it serious." Like it's something like that level, like just writing good enough writing. Yeah, I think he was given complete script control. You know, so that's just problematic. Yeah, it was, so, his, problem with it was his production too. company that funded the movie. So yeah, it's just, so the whole thing is just. It's just bad idea. After he, he, is he not just making the same movie? If yeah, if this, no, if he never, if he again, he's never he's never fought aliens. He's never done any of that kind of all the other stuff that all those other guys do. He doesn't do any of it. It's just he did fight aliens. He did fight very... zombies in one movie. I saw. I no saw, I didn't see it, but I Fuck saw a you. clip of him fighting zombies. And With what does he sword. do? He just They're uses not. the zombie's body weight against him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use like, the here's the thing with zombies. Fighting. Here's the thing with zombies. You don't need to sh- you don't need to shoot them in the head. When they come at you, you <laughs> use the body weight against them and you yeah. toss them. You judo throw the zombie. You just judo throw them. That's so, it. What and then movie you're good. is that? Against zombies have no dark. defense against your chi. Against <laughs> the dark? Would you guys see the Watch the trailer against for Against the, the dark, dark while I scream into a pillow. Oh, no. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, get your pillows out, boys. Here it comes. This, this might be the last podcast I do. <laughs> You're not watching this, but I have to see the trailer. Just forever? <laughs> Oh my god. He's like, you know that TV show Walking Dead? I heard it's real popular. It's just us and them. Ex military guys were trained to kill. Led by a master swordsman. We're here to decide who lives and dies. We'll stop at nothing (laughs) to save the human race. We're going to make it. Nothing kills us. Acting is a fucking joke. If you're an actor, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> What's with the ripoff Pantera right here? Hey, it, 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 work is work, my friend. No, acting is the most embarrassing fucking job ever. It's so embarrassing, dude. I'm going on. It's on DVD. Literally, you know what? Let's let's. I can't go so negative, Neil, on this. Let's turn around. This is just proof that you can literally do anything in life. The world yeah. is yours. You can literally do it. What's stopping you? All you what need is, is confidence because this man and, has it in droves. And a keto. Yeah. <laughs> I don't necessarily and, think you really need that. I'm not even sure. And, it's, and the it's only martial life. arts you could practice while eating a keto. <laughs> what, wow. what is stopping you? Seriously. What is stopping you? Some like you go to you're an actor and that you go to get cast in something and they go, Oh, uh, you don't have hair. Didn't stop Seagal. Oh, you're you're 70 pounds overweight. Didn't stop Seagal. Oh, you didn't have the right training for this. We need someone with martial arts training. Didn't stop Seagal. Literally, there's no fucking excuse. <laughs> well, you're gonna need you're gonna need the mafia to launder money through your endeavors. Uh, for you to be able to Jesus you know? Christ. I, I, also, I don't know if I don't know if you guys know. I, I think I texted you guys, but this this uh the house and all the land he owns. So half of the movie he was just filming at his house. That's flat paid. out amazing. Whoa, I just exploded. He was getting paid probably off of the production for yeah, oh, yeah. he's double dipping oh, without yeah. a doubt. That's amazing. Grifter. It's also, some, also drifter, some sad drifter. truck driver could pull in, pull into a stop, and be like, oh, I guess I'll get this, like, because it's a direct to video. Like, that's you're basically just having truck drivers watch you at that point. That's it. Yeah, that uh, that looked like the general makeup of the militia. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell my audience, they're the they're the enemy. <laughs> Everybody who took this gig. I'm sure knew what the they books. were getting. Yeah, they needed the money. I knew. I, I'm sure they knew what they were getting into, and I don't blame them. You know, you got bills to pay, and listen, we none of us have ever made 
a movie. I made a live concert DVD and edited it. And I edited it at his old place, at Seagal's old place. What? What? Yeah. yeah. That's a whole other podcast for a different day. Um, <laughs> Was there hair dye there? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I I just I I have no more words. I have no more energy. I have no more time. That was a crazy bad. <laughs> yeah, the flower I mean, thing at the end was just way too much for me. Yeah, made no sense. Made no sense at all. T anti I heard the phrase antiviral T holy crap yeah steven seagal just puts like a random word generator in front of him i think sometimes <laughs> he's like all right i need three things this this was 1999 so he was just like G- give me give me a word give, give, yeah. give me something that sounds good what do we got that sounds good or yeah. th- this might have been like david ayer the other writer that wrote it that took their names off of it <clears throat> that uh what's it paul paul monet and david ayer both Produced drafts of the screenplay, but they were likely credited under pseudonyms. <clears throat> um, drafts. There were drafts, <laughs> but there were guess, worse drafts. My guess is that like things like spacesuits and antiviral tea, it was all just like they were like doing a draft for a friend, and then they were like, "But you'll change this, obviously." I just I don't know what to say for this, but you guys will figure it out. And then they just did. <laughs> no. It was like every conversation he had with his daughter was just weird. It was uncomfortable and weird. And then there'd be this long pause where the camera just stays on him. It's like, why? Um, I have to there's two things in the notes or in the the movie notes on uh, IMDb that I forgot to mention. This this movie is based on a book called The Last Canadian. Canadian. Which is so which is so Hollywood. They're like, no, 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 that's not gonna work here. We'll call it the Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> the last and, Canadian? Unbelievable. Is that and a then, problem or and then the greatest thing says no animals were harmed in the making of this movie's producers narrowly avoided a catastrophe. After Stephen insisted he could ride the pony that played no. Missy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. That motherfucker tried to ride the Isn't, pony. He's like 6'4 or 6'5. Yeah. yeah, he's not small, what? dude. Also, it wasn't it great how the pony was at his house and then right at the end of the movie, it just like walked up. <laughs> like, it was like, hey, oh, you know oh it's better now. Let me go it, to town. Let me go to town and see what's up. <laughs> just, and, apparently, their their house is next to the town. <laughs> and also, was that the same pony from uh, Parks and Rec? So, little Sebastian. <laughs> 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 what is Steven Seagal still allowed in America? Um, I, don't I, I don't know, but I don't know. He has a Russian passport, right? Or well, yeah, is that now just he's a like, like yeah. naturalized Russian citizen or something. So I'm, yeah, I could see them saying, like, "Oh, you, you know, you, we have to talk. To, we have to talk to you first before you come in or something." I, I, unless there's there's more of a skirmish with Russia than we don't know about. My would be, would be my guess. Well, he's been banned from the Ukraine since like 2016 because he's Jesus a threat Christ. to national security. In yeah. quotes. <laughs> Wait, what? Because he's a threat, he's a threat to national security. It turns in out Ukraine. he moved, he moved to <laughs> he's Russia. He's a threat to national security. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It turns out he moved to Russia because of taxes, crypto crypto fines. Sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shit. This is great. That This is great? <laughs> I just love hearing about his ridiculous life. <laughs> yeah, it, it is outrageous. I just like that he was like, "No, I can ride that pony," and they were like, "We all, we, we, we almost, we really, we really dodged being able to say no animals were harmed." <laughs> is is what is there a way out for Seagal? Is there is there is there a redemption arc? Oh is yeah, there... he could use a gun or he could do a flip. <laughs> or... 
<laughs> no, I mean, all of these action guys, flip. <laughs> all of these action guys have, there's one way out, and it's comedy slash action. It's, it's the, like, you know, the rush hours of the movie world where you're like, <clears throat> I'm still going to do my action and I'll be relatively serious, but then I'm going to surround myself with very funny people. Like, I mean, fucking like true lies. Tom Arnold almost steals that movie multiple times. Oh, yeah. And let's be honest, Steven Seagal, if Tom Arnold was stealing a movie, which he could have in the DMX one easily, yeah. he was hilarious in his scenes, which is I think that's the only time anybody's ever said that about uh, uh, Tom Arnold, but um, <laughs> he can steal a movie. <clears throat> but, wow. Um, um, he, uh, like, Steven Seagal wouldn't be comfortable enough to give somebody else, like, oh, we're going to have them just be hilarious, and then you're going to punch somebody, and then they're going to, like, make a joke about it. And he'd be like, no, no, it's this is, you know, my craft isn't a joke. Steven Seagal will never laugh at himself. Never. I mean, a shame, I mean if hilarious. anybody wants to be entertained that's listening to this, you can go and watch his clips from the SNL show that he did, which no, is like, which no. is famously that's amazing the episode of SNL. I definitely watched it that night. Oh, it was amazing. That night it came out, I watched. <clears throat> and Dude, anybody who worked on the show when he came on said it was the craziest week of their lives. Yeah, it, there's there's no going back. This he's no. But meanwhile, it's... if he did a comedy, like it would it would work. Same thing with like JCBD or any of those like the only two that get it <coughs> are are Arnold and Stallone. They both understand we could laugh at ourselves because I'm like Arnold's like, "Yeah, laugh at me all you want. I'm still fucking Arnold" cuz he thinks that. And it works. So I have a a one minute. So so wait, Steven Seagal's <laughs> SNL bit here. If you'd like to see that, oh, <laughs> what if sweet Seagal God. like what if it was like a Bigfoot movie and Seagal was in the costume like doing you know, <laughs> as Bigfoot? Like he he that would never would be amazing. <laughs> I'd watch that movie immediately. I'd like, watch he that would movie before Cocaine Bear. He would never take that role right <laughs> because his face isn't shown. But that if... would be big. If they did a movie where somebody else was in the costume, and then at the end of the movie, you were it was revealed that it was a man and it was Seagal, he wouldn't even do that. The prestige. He wouldn't do uh, he wouldn't do that cameo joke because he'd be like, no, this isn't funny. Uh, I want to see Bigfoot put a hiker in a wrist lock. Yes. Let me see it. Yes. Let me see just, it, man. Just guys, That's... Flipping, just guys flipping through the mountains. <laughs> I, I either amazing. I either want to see that or I want to see one of these canceled producers just lean into it. Like get like someone who's you know is great at making movies, but they're just but they're just a shitbag human. Like fucking um what's the dude that was like banging a 13-year-old in the ass in a hot tub and if I had to move to France? What was his oh. what's his oh, oh, alleged, was that allegedly place? Roman yeah, Polanski, Polanski. Yeah. yes. So here you go, Roman Polanski. Here's the here's the trailer. <laughs> Roman, <laughs> Roman Polanski <laughs> presents. Steven, Steven Seagal, Seagal wouldn't listen in. to him because Steven Seagal can beat him in a fight, so he would immediately <laughs> say no. Come on, okay. So so co-starring o Steven Seagal, co-starring O.J. Simpson. Like if they do <laughs> naked gun. Wow. Oh. Roman Polanski brings back the Naked Gun franchise with fucking Steve Seagal, <laughs> OJ, Chris D'Elia as the fucking comic relief. <laughs> Dude, this could you could be on to something here. Or we do or we do a game show like Survivor on an island, but it's everybody who's canceled, but whoever survives, like it's Seagal, what? it's OJ. It's fucking whoever survives the island. Well, S S S Seagal would lose because at some point you'd have there'd be a running competition. Uh, <laughs> the prize is to be in Tarantino's next movie, yeah. like to save Ooh. your career. She did Wait, you hear not, about the not to circle hear? back. Is the Leah canceled? I because I don't know. What's oh going on. Yeah. yes. Oh yeah. Oh, he was, bro. He was, it's he was, rough. He was, he was it, apparently a groomer. Very it's, canceled. It, it's rough. 
It's rough for Dalia right now. What? Uh, so did did you hear about the wardrobe girl who got fired after uh, after Seagal gave her some pants to clean? What? No, he's still in them. No, <laughs> good one. <laughs> no, she, she goes. No, no, I didn't get any pants. All I had was these curtains. Oh Jesus! All right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. So, um, what? My computer's well, not frozen. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I realized I was I was delving into dangerous territory. I was I was on dangerous ground when, uh, when when including fat jokes involving Steven Seagal. Yeah, love it, dude. Imagine what the fucking craft services table looked like at this. Oh, at this movie, craft I think it looks decimated. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like try this try this amazing uh indigenous uh salad dressing and it's like it's just a thousand island it's just like... <laughs> no you don't understand it's, there's a, it's a famous ingredient. it's a famous island dressing <laughs> he's like he's like try this this special cream that we make uh on the reservation and it's just fucking sour cream yeah, yeah. it's just like just literally like the secret is i put oh my god in it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> dude holy crap yeah. yeah it's i'm sorry yeah i i apologize to everybody who listened to this podcast who watched this movie who's literally watched any seagal movie after i, I after what is the last good one yeah dude right oh that's none. not cbd my bad um, none there's none 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 good What's what's the last um, what what's his last good movie? The last good one was probably that major one where he died. Oh, Executive Decision. Real life. Yes. Or there you go. Oh, the, uh, Kurt, the Kurt Russell starring movie that Seagal demanded to have his name like over the fucking name of the movie. Yep. Stop billing, and he dies in like twenty one minutes. He did most certainly know? did. In 2016, George Foreman. Challenged Steven Seagal to a ten-round MMA match. I mean, there, I, I, I support this. There should I would, be, because I would pay to see it. Yeah, there needs wow. to be bucks. an older league. Like there needs to be a senior league. That's George Foreman. Uh, welcome welcome to the sh- senior concussion league, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. How old don't need is concussions? That? George Foreman is still. George Foreman, he won the world championship at like 65. That oh, yeah. dude, that dude I definitely, I definitely do not want to feel him punch me in the face. No, God, no, no. not a chance. Steven Seagal backed out immediately from what I read here. <laughs> well, he backed out as quickly as he can. <laughs> yeah. you know, he's not moving it, too fast. It took several days. minutes. <laughs> no, he- <laughs> Dude, well, it's because they went to go to weigh-ins and he got on the scale and it said to be continued. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> he got on the scale and it just said plus size. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steven Seagal had a talk with it about how it's not right to point out Native Americans' uh <laughs> like problems. He's like, I'm Native American. You can't really make fun of me, you know? Yeah. What? He's everything. What? What doesn't he identify as? A good actor. What's it? Yeah. What's what would what was it? What would his indi- what was it? What would his indigenous name be? <laughs> Runs with bullshit. <laughs> Runs with weights. <laughs> And he does have a weird run. It's the weirdest. <laughs> Sit, sitting bears. <laughs> sitting bears. <laughs> sitting bears. <laughs> like, what's your problem? I can't see my feet. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, what are you watching? Not your movies and not your weight. <laughs> wow. Um all right, we we got to end this and so I just listen. 
I'm no fucking I'm I'm no movie director, I'm no writer, I'm just I'm a broken man after watching this movie. I wish I had more hands so I could give it more thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well <Same>. played. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was that that was rough. I am so glad I watched that, and I will never watch that again. No, but you uh, can trick people into watching it now. Now it's like a sneaky tool of evil in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, just wait, just wait. It gets good. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like, like you old can't. assholes it's... that are like, oh, you got to watch your show. <laughs> Season four, it really takes off. And you're like, Fuck it you. definitely <laughs> lacked that fun aspect of terrible to it yeah but it's um supposed to be beating people up that, that's the only reason i watch a stupid seagull movie so a fat man can kick people he's trying that's to make it. an art house film though where he's like i don't know jesus yeah western jesus it's weird. i like that his accent just sounds like he's had three drinks <laughs> does he have any right like do do have Who's we seen any of his Sagal or the beverly hills ninja who's more in shape as a martial artist? Oh. <laughs> have we have we uh have we seen anybody else in his family like like they're not they're not overweight right like no one else in the Sagal family is I, overweight i don't know if i've ever looked because because no, he, he has a, apparently has a lot of children it but it doesn't run in the family wow well played um i back what, that what it what are we gonna do next what's the movie we're gonna do next um i don't know weren't we talking about uh what's it at ua bowl or that guy no no we have to actually <laughs> watch a good movie <laughs> um, um shit. I can't remember the ones I was re- I was I recommended a while ago. Um, the new one. Um, oh, fu- uh, moon- I I fucking thought Moonfall was right up the right up right up Main oh. Street for this fucking podcast. Oh yeah, we still haven't done that, have we? Um, Moonfall uh, is fun. The, What's the, the one mo- with Steven Seagal where he saves the whale? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Star Trek Four? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna say the one where he saves himself. <laughs> oh. What's the one where Steven Seagal's pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I just searched Steven Seagal well movie and out of reach 2014. Fuck Come you. on. Come on. What? He, what are the, what are the chances that Steven Seagal has lost weight in the last like, year? You think? <laughs> no, he's gotten so much bigger. He's no. so much bigger I, in the past year. Wait, Howard, you're supposed to say slim to none. <laughs> oh yeah, De- definitely, definitely slim to this slim to none. Freaking Steven Seagal! Uh, Holy crap! What the, when Steven Seagal went to fight George Foreman and they had the weigh-ins? He got on the scale and it said one at a time, please. <laughs> <laughs> they go. George Foreman said, "Hey, I, w- I want to be in uh, in one of your movies, Stephen." And, and Stephen goes, "Piece of cake." And he goes, "Really? You put me in a movie?" He goes, "No, no, I just want a piece of cake." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he would have got lit up. Oh my! God. Oh, he would have got lit up. Ah, <sighs> all right. I'm what gonna are we, go. What are we thinking? Do we have any ideas? I'm good with Moonfall. All right, I guess I'll watch Moonfall. The, the Patreon's gonna kill me. They, no, they hate great. every movie we watch. That's well, isn't that hard. kind of the point? They don't have Let's, to. We'll do uh, it so they don't have to. They're awesome <laughs> movies. I think Moonfall will be watchable. Well, oh, it's cool. I've watched it like it's four watchable. Times. It's fucking incredible. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, Steven Seagal! I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> but he should be. Yeah, my, I could only be happier if this gets back to him and he sa- says that he wants to fight me. I and we be, hurt I his feelings. So all I have to do is stand there in. and I'll win because he needs to use my 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 momentum to beat me up. <laughs> I, I think thinking, dude. Do you think we'll ever it, it? Do you think we'll ever see Steven Seagal again in real life, like no. anywhere? 
No. no. Besides like a Weight Watchers meeting or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When when Vladimir Putin uh you know when when World War Three really kicks off, uh Putin will have Steven Seagal by his side. Yeah, and I, be I can't imagine I can't imagine you. him being on a plane and uh, for fifteen hours flying back here. I'll be honest with you. If I ever see Putin making a speech and behind him is Steven Seagal, I will laugh till I die. (laughs) I'll just I'll just never stop laughing. Oh, never. Never. He that that that's how we'd know we were in the simulation. (laughs) Uh, Are are you guys are you guys not aware? Oh god. They're buddies. Oh yeah, I know they're buddies. Oh okay. But I don't see. I don't see. If if I see him sitting behind him when he's declaring war one day, like I will be pissing my pants laughing. Oh my god! Oh, we. You know what? We really gotta. We (laughs) listen. Stop. We we gotta lay off Steven Seagal. I mean, at this point, he's just he's just got so much on his plate. Oh my god! Uh, did you like download Jackie Bartland's <laughs> j- joke book and just put it yeah. <laughs> let's golden corral this? Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Do you think like? Do you think when Steven Seagal? Sug- <laughs> do you think? When- <laughs> you can't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you think when Steve- <laughs> we're not finishing until you say the joke? <laughs> do you think when Steven Seagal got on the scale to weigh in against form and they said, We need your weight, not your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, all right. This is this holy is, crap. Yeah, uh, we're having fun. Uh, I, at least you know what, and I'm sorry because I've struggled with my weight my whole life. I'm not. I I know for the fat people who are going to be mad at listening to me. Oh, I'm. I struggle with it constantly. I um, it. I, I just say, listen, listen. Go if ahead you take Google a, devil, you know. I, <laughs> Howard Air, Howard Devil, you know Air. Well, yeah, no, seriously, seriously. If I just want to say, if you're offended by any of these fat jokes, I just got to say, you know what? Just ignore them. You're bigger than. That. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my okay. Gosh. Okay. Oh my God. All right. So. Oh my God. Yeah. So. How are we? Uh, yeah, are we gonna do Moonfall? We got to get out of here. How, how, we, yeah, I'm down we, for that. Are we gonna watch the Moonfall trailer real quick, or uh, are we just gonna take your word on it? Well, yeah, watch it if you can. Yeah, Brian, you want to? You want to? Uh... Pulling it up right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Here, here we go. This. This one's at least star studded, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's like a bunch of real people in this one. Prepared for this. They're coming! Three minus three, two, one. Go for ignition! Yes. <laughs> that was a trailer for the trailer. That weirded me out. What? It's the it's it's the independence guys that did it. The Independence Day guys. So you you know what's oh, happening. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're gonna see some cool in the world stuff. It's cool. How many how many fucking trailers have done this? Lost contact with the world for two minutes. Not true. Yes. We found something on that day. That they kept hidden for 50 years. And now, it's too late to stop. <laughs> In breaking news, the governor has just. Steven Seagal would love this movie. He'd love to be in it, yes. No, you know why he would love this movie? Because why? it appeals. 
because it appeals to a wider audience. <laughs> <laughs> this planet has suffered. Wait, does the moon really fall out of the sky in this fucking movie? It's hilarious. I back it. It looks it looks like it's gonna be entertaining. Yeah. Did you guys see I Greenland? Yes, Greenland also good. The ending, the, the this I think is better, but I wish Jerry B was in that. It, it been both. Oh, soft, soft body Jerry B. Oh, yeah, I want Jerry I want B. Dad bod Jerry B forever. <laughs> dad bod dad. Jerry B is hard. Is yeah. What? <laughs> dad bod what? Jerry B is hard. Make that shirt right now. What's Jerry B's? What's Dad Bod Jerry B's best movie? Is it Greenland? I don't know. Den of, Den of Thieves is great. I love Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves. I heard that was good. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey, I'm telling you, Plane was. It was pretty good. You it went was pretty you saw good. Plane. I went and saw a Plane. In the theater. <laughs> I, I, in the theater, I saw it. <laughs> You're so proud. <laughs> what? I saw it. It was great. <laughs> yeah. I was just sat there and ate popcorn and laughed. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, I'm jealous. Man, oh, yeah. well, I'd say we should have. We should have all gone to see it. Oh man, I wish we did. Well, guys. It's uh I'm glad we turned it around at the end. I'm uh I'm also glad that Steven Seagal lives in uh in Russia <laughs> now. Hey, wait, since he lives in Russia, would that make him a deserter? Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Dude, can I just tell you the there's so many that I really was like People are going to quit halfway through the podcast, so I'll just save all the fat jokes for the end. <laughs> and, you know, there was ones that were really bad, like, you know, Ralphie May was his body double in this one. Yeah, I just, wow. it was really, like, there was, rest in peace to the great Ralphie May, by the way. I like you're um, pretending like you weren't going to say him, and then you just say it. <laughs> there, no, no, yeah. <laughs> No, there, there was. There were bad ones. Like there were amazing. really. There were ones like, because you know where, because I go morbid, bro. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. yeah, I, I, I go, I go there as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. and so his, movie, his movies will do that. They'll do that. For you. Dude, that movie was amazing. I mean. I, <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> yeah, you can only tell people to watch that movie as punishment. <laughs> yeah. So we we will end it here, everybody. Um don't take it personal. We love you, we appreciate you. Moonfall. Um Moonfall. And I promise no fat jokes during the Moonfall show. Only moon landing jokes for that. Only flat earth and moon landing jokes. Oh, there's an entire conspiracy in this movie you're gonna like be tweaking your nippies to. So don't don't worry. <laughs> there's a whole yeah, new conspiracy. Boy. Here. Oh, please tell me it's realm. P no, wait, what was the one? I don't know what realm is, but P wait. Because I was gonna say there's a whole conspiracy in this and in, in windfall you're gonna appreciate. King Kong versus Godzilla wasn't that the realm? Or no, that was Hollow Earth. That was her. Right? Hollow Earth. Oh yeah, Hollow Earth is is this, something people think of. This is Weird. Hollow Moon. Hell yeah! That's all I'll say. What? All right. So um, you know when Stephen Hollow King, Moon. when uh when Steven Seagal was born, you know it wasn't a stork that brought. Wait, I can't. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> It was it wasn't a stork that <laughs> what is happening? I can't finish him. When Steven Seagal was was born, he was so fat it wasn't a stork. It wasn't a stork that brought him. It was a crane. <laughs> Get it? The other bird? The, yeah, the, the yes. Crane? All right, all right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. I'm sorry, everybody. Let's let's end it. This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. All right, guys. That was well, I hope you have a great weekend and a great uh, rest of your day. And yeah, that's it. It's uh, it's over. It's done. That was the done. movie. That was. Right. The, I don't even know how the fucking movie ended. Did they get the? the did they the get helicopter the helicopter flowers? It's, it's gonna end. Just oh, like right. The right, the flowers. No way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just gonna. Yeah, it's just gonna, yeah. Just um, flowers fell, and then just make a vast assumption as to what happened. Just, you know, as as you did with most parts of this movie, was yeah. just you know just pretend you're stupid and it makes sense. Well, the, the thing about it is, is you can only write characters as smart as yourself. So Steven Seagal makes his own character and he thinks he's, you know, a super genius. And that's Steven shows. Seagal still thinks it's 1996. Yeah. No, he sucks. <laughs> I mean, the one benefit of being Steven Seagal is that you'll never get kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just walking around in Mexico with impunity. <laughs> Just walking around Universal Studios having kids ask him if they can ride. <laughs> All right, we gotta stop. I'm, I'm choking here. Just just having the fire department around just in case of his thighs start rubbing. Just, just like just, Maybe oh that's why God. he runs so weird. It's so his thighs don't rub while he's running <laughs> and cause spontaneous combustion. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, dude, I had ones where it was like, did you hear about the tsunami back <laughs> It's like Seagal, Seagal goes swimming. <laughs> <laughs> cannot Jesus handle it. Christ. Cannot yes. handle it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's amazing. I mean, he'll never get he'll never get flesh eating disease. That's for sure. That's good. That would be a, back, that would be a back, fully sated disease. Yeah, I was gonna say, the bacteria. It's like, it's like when a tick gets full and just drops off. It's like, <laughs> ah, we're good. It just dies of exhaustion. The bacteria is just like, oh, like I didn't think Christ. I could fill this thing up, but oh, it my turns out. God. Oh, my God. It's just, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Uh, all right. Yeah. we. This is bad. This is really bad. Yes. It's great. <laughs> we're just giving this man a little bit of grief no if, if you invited if you ever invited steven seagal to the super bowl party, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. what is happening <laughs> you invite him to the super bowl i'm just trying to think of this shit from sixth grade like all I the could... shit from sixth grade <laughs> I could cut out our entire synopsis of this movie and just release this part. Of <laughs> he brings his own spoons. To the uh, no, no, seriously, we can't. We, no, we got to stop joking like this. It's like you know, if if you want to really be welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Oh boy. Yeah. I mean, he Steven Seagal is like he just he's so vain. He thinks the world revolves. <laughs> all right, all right. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're you know you know his favorite cookie is, right? No, what, what? is it, Jamie? <laughs> For <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> All right, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> it sounds racist, but it isn't, Howard. We're gonna have to bring is we're gonna have to bring back is that racist featuring Howard. We're gonna have to bring back that segment. The four 
Shin Cookie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you all. I love you all. Sorry to the to the fat people. It's it's fine. Everything will be all right. He's still all going. Right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed today's episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast. There's another episode, another two episodes. We watched uh, Moonfall and we watched Suburban Commando with uh, with the one and only Hulk Hogan. And those are up at gasdigital.com. Use the promo code JASTA30 to hear those first before everyone else. And you'll get new episodes of the JASTA show like uh, this episode I just did with Dave Peters from Throwdown, who's going to be playing at the Furnace Fest in uh, the end of September here. With Hatebreed, first Hatebreed Throwdown show in over a decade. So get your I tickets feel to Furnace like I Fest. Was at the last one, you might have been Jailhouse Rock tour, or even uh, I'm trying to think. Or, or I was at I was at one like maybe ten years ago, but it blows me away that it's been such a long time. Yeah, so they're back and they decided to do Furnace Fest, and Fuck and yeah, dude, you know, by the time people are watching this or hearing this, we'll be out on the road. So get your tickets, get your meet and greets, MartyrStore.net for all the leftover merch from Milwaukee Metal Fest and the meet and greets for this uh, tour with Hapri Terror, Vein FM, and uh, Jesus Peace. And yeah, thank you to Factor Meals, FactorMeals.com slash Josta fifty. Use the promo code Josta fifty, and of course. IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JASTA10. And thank you if you got anything off of uh, Depop. Depop.com slash JASTA. It's like eBay meets Instagram. And uh, thank you to my stepbrother and my nephew and everybody who's been helping me over that. All those orders should be shipping. Even while I'm on tour, there'll be some uh, some orders shipping out. So thank you for that. And uh, Patreon.com slash JASTA if you want to hear the tour, tour diary episodes while I'm out. But I'll be back September 24th, and we'll have a bunch of other podcasts out very soon. So thanks for the support. And, uh, and yeah, we'll be back with another episode of How Awesome Is This Podcast. Uh, yeah, Moonfall, I think, is going to be next with Holly Berry, who's no not sp- crazy, by the way. She's totally normal. <laughs> Absolutely normal. No spoilers about Moonfall. but uh... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Spike Lee, like have a full bone like domestic dispute with her all right we don't have to talk about it. we love holly it's all she's in the past. great yeah she's great she looks great 57 still looks great swordfish go watch <laughs> it <laughs> goodbye everybody produced by brian mckay executive producers jake olszewski ben lee aj lewis garrett keeping dan smith nick torito jj hernandez joe bartovic jason jarvis Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St. Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arna Rock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.